Welcome, everyone. It's the 5th of October, 2023. This is Documentation Office Hours. Uh, a number of agenda topics today, including blog posts, Hacktoberfest, uh, elections, failing Jenkins CI builds, Google Summer of Code projects, existing requirements document, it's duplicated, choosing a plug-in bill of materials and the September newsletter. Bruno, anything else we need to add? No, thank you, Mark. Okay, then let's look at Jenkins' blog post first. It's been two weeks at least since I've been in Doc's office hours, so let's see what we've got for blog. So we had a, a, a Jenkins blog post on Mergeify, September 26th and then the concluding Google Summer of Code blog post. Now we've also got one pending blog post, thanks to Basel Crow. Let's take a look at it so that we can see what's coming. This will arrive tomorrow. And thanks to the preview site that Gavin Mogan has provided for us, we can actually look at the blog post on, on the preview site. So let's go look at the preview here. Yes, it has finished building. And there we are. So the blog says, and this is Basil's noting that prototype JS has been removed from Jenkins Weekly. Congratulations. S almost six months of work to get to this point. Really a yeah. wonderful, amazing effort. Uh, 60 plus plugins that had to be revised, major changes in all sorts of places, lots of people doing really great work to remove this 10 plus year old JavaScript library from Jenkins. Getting rid 10, 10 years in, in JavaScript land is like infinity, right? That's, that's yeah. forever. That's so many generations ago. So great to be rid of it and looking forward to for future. And I, I really liked Basel's last comment. Thanks for your contributions. I hope to see many of you again in the J Java X to Jakarta API migration, which is again, a huge migration that will have to go in lots of places and do lots of things. Smart move, Basil. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well done. So, so nice blog post coming. And we've got one that's been discussed in the Jenkins governance board, but we don't have a draft for it yet where in the governance board meeting, it was noted, we've really got two or three different Java changes happening here in October. And Basel said he was willing to write a blog post that combines them all into a Java and Jenkins blog post that will be talking about Java 21s now supported. We've turned on the, we've switched on the Java 11 end of life admin monitor. So people will be warned that Java 11 will be end of life in October of 2024. We've switched to Java 17 as the default Java for container images. Those kinds of things, all, all useful coming in a future blog post during October. Next topic then is Hacktoberfest. So thanks to John Mark Messon and to others in the Jenkins community, Jenkins is back in Hacktoberfest. And we're seeing already some good contributions from people who are interested in participating in Hacktoberfest. I was just working one on Jenkins Core where a, a contribution is helping with transforming APIs from one form to another to get rid of some deprecated usages of an, an API. So thanks very much. Uh, Bruno, anything I you want to highlight on Hacktoberfest? Uh, I just saw a few um, numbers uh, crunched by Jean-Marc earlier today. So this morning we had uh, 55 Hacktoberfest PRs on the Jenkins project and 36 had already been merged, if I'm not mistaken. So total validated Hacktoberfest PRs were 36 by 16 different contributors. So that's a very good start for the 5th of October. 20 something waste days to go. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. And that's, that's, it is only the fifth. It's yeah. a, it, we're, we're not far into October and we're already showing good results. Thanks. Thanks very much. Next topic was Jenkins governance board and officer election. So Alexander Brandis uh, posted in mid September that the Jenkins board is 
up for re-election. So two of the five members of the board are up for re-election and all the Jenkins officers. And the way you register to vote is you go to the election voter page. And on this election voter page, you'll see right now we've got 40 voters registered and we look forward to having more. It's, it's a, a good thing. If you've contributed to Jenkins anytime prior to September 1, 2023, you are eligible to vote. And now you may say, what does contribute mean? Well, contribute means in this case that you did one of the things related to this participate page. And you can see that there are an awful lot of things here. So have you assisted people on the communication channels? Yep, you're eligible to vote. Have you attended a Jenkins meetup? Yep, you're eligible to vote. Did you submit a pull request helping with some code? Yep. Did you help someone else use Jenkins? Yep, you're eligible to vote. Uh, did you test Jenkins? Yes. Did you submit some documentation? Yes, etc. And if you'd like, you can even donate cash. So the Jenkins Project has a way to donate. Why not? And I think that one of the prerequisites is that you have an account on community.jenkins.io. Am I right? Well, not even so much that you have an account, but that you are willing to create one. Okay. So if you don't have an account, but you meet the, the criteria as a, as a contributor, you could either register your GitHub account with community.jenkins.io or create a new one dedicated to community.jenkins.io. Either is fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, so lots of ways to qualify to vote and we encourage people to vote and shamelessly vote for Mark Waite. I'm one of the, one of the, <laughs> uh, one of the candidates as member of the board vote for Mark Waite. Okay. That enough shameless electioneering. That's okay. So let's get that voter registration page is, and I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, I don't have my hat yet. Uh, work, vote for Mark Wait. You yeah, know, I'm a little. <laughs> that's but but that's that's a good idea. I may actually get a hat like that. Very good. I could just <laughs> see showing up to some meetings. Vote Mark Wait. Oh, uh, will it be too late? You know, you'll give um, a talk and um, help to organize a meetup in San San Jose, Santa Clara. Um, it's, Santa, Santa Clara. Clara. Yeah, that's a good but idea. You could actually. have a hat. Yeah, that yeah. that's not a bad idea. I think I think vote for Mark. Vote for Mark. Wait, Jenkins board is a good hat. Mark needs a hat. I'll, okay. I'll I'll remember that. I like that because that might get some laughs as well. I like that. Very good. Super. Thank you. Next topic then was failing Jenkins.io build. So uh, yes, on let's this take one, you a look be able at those. To say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, let let's take a look and see what's going on. So I've I've not been paying attention recently. So you're saying no? Okay. So this one is okay. Oh, so maybe that was a previous one. Um, when I looked at the repo directly, uh, GitHub, well, and, 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 and I, it was fa failing, you know, the red check. Oh, right. But I did not daydream. No, no, no. You're correct. I think oh, that I think... was a GitHub action that failed. Right. So, and so, and that's important, right? We CI for, or the processes that maintain Jenkins.io are not just CI processes, right? There is not just on Jenkins.ci.jenkins.io, we also maintain it here by labeling conflicting pull requests. And it says we've exceeded our rate limit. Interesting. Okay, so, and that's saying it on a pure GitHub action, label conflicting yep. PRs. This has nothing to do with it. And this one, likewise, now, the question I, then I is... I plead guilty. Yeah, but uh, I saw the first error message was the same. We ran out of um, token. Right, something. exactly. So it says we've exhausted our API rate limit. Yeah. The question then becomes... Well, so now the I guess for me, the question is how how long has this been failing? And I'm not sure how to see the... Oh, there we go. We can see the history of the runs here. Yeah. So we had a failure an hour ago, another failure an hour ago, another, but then we haven't had a failure before. But prior to that is, for a long time. 
Yeah, we have just accepted um, one of my PRs, which was about uh, finding the latest. We just lost your audio. GitHub token. Oh, ah, sorry. Okay, so no, I was just saying. Go ahead. Maybe update CLI makes um, too big use of the token. I don't know. And, and it could be, but if that's the case, we should be able to see that with this, right? So if we run it here, this should tell us, because this is only running the update, update CLI operation, mm -hmm. not the other okay. one. So let's, let's let it run and see, and we can come back to it. Because if if it's breaking down, we can always revert your change. My suspicion yeah. is it's not update CLI because I do hope so. Yeah. So although let's, well, let's look at this one. So here we see, and if we look at that pull request, it shows checks and there is update CLI that passed. Hmm. So I think that failure was transient. Now, now that doesn't make it healthy. It's just, okay. <laughs> it's not, it's not specific somehow to update CLI or it, rather it's not specific to your change. So we're building, oh, interesting. So did we, okay, this one fails with a, a very different message i think i think this one has nothing to do with rate but no is it no i still say api saying. rate yes you're yeah. correct it's still got the air api rate limit okay so now let's go back to our list of actions this one's still running Yeah, so so we'll have to come back to it. Yep. All right. So we've we've investigated it's non-fatal uh, failure in update CLI. And what was the other one that failed? Oh, and the identify and label conflicting, conflicting label conflicting pull yep. request, right? due to GitHub API rate limit. Good. Okay, so we got it. Anything else on that topic? No, thank you, Mark. Okay, Google Summer of Code. Next topic. So we've got two open documentation projects and one open document uh, coding project. I'm not going to talk about the coding project, GitLab plugin maintenance modernization. It's it's just there. It needs more work. Docker Compose, tell us tell us about it, Bruno. Oh, uh, there is still quite a lot of work in order to have it within the Jenkins CI or infra organization, and so I'm working on it. I'm only working for the time being on the first step, which is using um, the internal GitHub um, Docker image registry. And then we'll see there are lots of other steps before um, putting that into the Jenkins CI organization. I'm dealing with Damien Dupontold in order to know what to do before that. So it's progressing slowly, but it's progressing. And today I've also uh, updated a few Im um, base images on which we are working. Of course, the um, latest Jenkins LTS image, but also the latest bookworm and so on, because some of them are not yet handled by Dependabot or Update CLI, but will automate everything, automate everything afterwards. Good, very good. Okay, so so you're so the the container, the Docker Compose container image is still workable then in terms of your work yep. has kept it functional. So we've not lost the ability to use that. We're just not ready to deploy the container images to, to final destination yet. And you're going to use the GitHub container registry as a development location. You're right. Uh, I'm still testing it uh, manually on a daily basis, just in case. 
um, and it also it is also updated on a regular basis uh, because of plugin updates. So the whole GitHub Action thing is running oh, several good. times a week whenever we have a new plugin version. So it is yes, maintaining it's itself. Solid. It is maintaining itself yeah. for plugin updates. Good. Yep. Very good. That's a good story. All right. Anything else you want to highlight there? No, thank you, Mark. Okay, so version documentation here. Uh, Chris Stern has started the conversations with the infra team to decide on uh, on details, and uh, will be discussed further in documentation office hours in about 12 hours. Docs Office Hours Asia's. We've moved Docs Office Hours Asia 30 minutes earlier so that uh, Chris can attend. Any any other things on Google Summer of Code that we need to discuss here? No, no, no. Okay. So next topic then was the existing requirements and support policy document. This has been implemented by Kevin and merged. And it, it looks great. So here's how it looks. We go to the handbook and we see an entire chapter dedicated to platform information with Java support policy, Linux support, whoops, Linux support policy, Windows support policy, and the upgrade guides for Java 11 and Java 17. Kevin also preserved the existing locations where these things were previously and automatically redirects to the new location in the pages. So That's Java support cool. po um, policy was elsewhere and it's now here. Okay, I found it this morning when trying to answer a user on communityjenkin.io. I put the link to this new location. Great Good. work. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, and I think it should be indexed correctly into the search engine. It is good. So it didn't do a redirect there. So it's it's running well. And in fact, it's even received its first editions. Uh, Basil Crow added this table for us when he was reviewing some existing documentation and said, hey, this needs more information. Let's publish it. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, good. So the next one was how to describe the process of choosing a plugin bill of materials. No progress, needs more work. Yeah, so in your improve a plugin tutorial, there's a part that tells you which version you should maybe use. Uh, mm -hmm. for you know it's not really detailed but it's there and as my pr pr has been merged regarding you know uh, updating the jenkins lts versions and the bomb versions um there is a slight change um from what was in the previous documentation now it's dynamized i would say um so you will maybe see something different uh what is it the bomb version yet it may have changed we are still targeting the old 2.3.19 uh, Jenkins uh, version. Yeah, it's somewhere in there in this page. Good. Okay. So yes, well then. The, oh, oh, but yeah, this one. I, I did that. But frankly, we, we will be able to change it. It's just um, parameter in my update CLI manifest. So the right. 3.19x is a seven to last version, and the 3.8.7 is a third to last, I think version so i kept that in that part but it will evolve each time we have a new lts version oh seriously so you you up so these are actually being managed now by update cli yep these, wow yep. okay all right that's, that's maybe what breaks uh jenkins io but that's <laughs> it is well, what it is it, we, we'll certainly want to invest oh and even in the commit message you updated it very nice. Yes. Very, very nice. Okay. So it was not a shameless plug. It was just to tell you that uh, once you will have written that documentation about how to choose a bomb, 
I will have to update it with update CLI too. And Got if it. you, the committee is not happy with the um, version I chose for this documentation, please let me know so that I can modify it. Great, very good. All right. Last topic is just a reminder to me and to others that September newsletter is due and it's time to write your content. Bruno, anything else we need to discuss yeah. today? Um, may we just have a look at the build to see if it's still failing before leaving? Oh, oh good idea. Yeah, let's do it. So let's look let's leave at... on a success. <laughs> on the okay, failure. so here it is. It's, oh, it's still, still running. running. And no, it's but it's now in. I think that puts it in post checkout. Does it? Well, yet. let's see. Okay. So it, it completed the dry run mode, and I think that was where we had the failure previously. Hmm. So that's pretty encouraging. Fingers crossed. We'll see. Uh, and yeah, we can we can hang on for just a minute because there's certainly plenty of other things. Let's while we're waiting for that, let's do a let's use this as our excuse to look at some bug reports. See if there's anything in the bug reports that we need to triage out. So possible missing reference in plugin reference in documentation. So he's saying, trying to incorporate what's documented here using tags in Jenkins. Discover tags within repository. Oh, okay. I think I see what he's trying to ask for. What he says is, tell me what I need to have installed in order to do this. That might be one mm -hmm. where we want to consider a Docker Compose kind of thing where we would say, here's a Compose file for this blog post in some long distant future day. Okay. Here's, how you, here's, here's how you run this thing. Because That's this given that it's listing the git branch source it actually should not require should not require the github branch source at all hmm. it's enough because of this this branch source that it's using it should be able to do that without without needing a github branch source so i don't i I think this is a mistaken description, but now I'd have to explore it further just to be sure. And I think it's fair to say, hey, what plugins are required is a good thing to have, mm -hmm. right? That's, yeah, that's not a bad idea. And be sure you've got, particularly since this one shows Blue Ocean, right? If you're going to say yeah. Blue Ocean, here's an example of a file that will let you run this with Blue Ocean. Good. All right, and not successful. Well, is it? Oh, yes, success. That's what this green Ooh. check mark is, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see. So update CLI. Yep, that was successful. Good. So transient failure, and I'm relieved. If there's a problem, we'll we'll well, it's probably going to come back, but we'll chase it down when it does. Of course. Yeah. That's all that I had for today. Bruno, anything else from you? No, thank you, Mark. All right. Let's close for today. Thanks, everybody.